Hi, my name is Ben, and I'm the co-founder of Ascend Finance, where we focus on helping people understand the differences between debt settlement, bankruptcy, debt management, et cetera. Today, we're gonna cover the differences between debt settlement and bankruptcy, specifically Chapter 7 bankruptcy and Chapter 13 bankruptcy. These debt relief options are maybe some of the most common options, so we're gonna dive into a few different things that should really help you understand the differences, pros and cons, costs, et cetera. So what we're gonna cover first is we're gonna do a quick debt definition of bankruptcy versus debt settlement. Next, we are going to cover just how to think about bankruptcy versus debt settlement in terms of your finances, specifically the cost and the duration of both options. Next, we'll, we'll, we'll go through a, a free debt settlement versus bankruptcy calculator that we put together that can help you personalize that to your specific situation. After that, we'll cover the debt settlement process. Then we'll go over the chapter seven bankruptcy process followed by the chapter 13 bankruptcy process. Near the end, we will go over the chapter seven bankruptcy, chapter 13 bankruptcy, and and debt settlement pros and cons so that you can really understand those very, very well. Finally, we'll try to help you answer the question, what should you do? Or at least we'll, we'll try to give you some insights on, on kind of what, what you may wanna do. All right, so let's get started. I've spent many years helping people understand the differences between debt settlement and bankruptcy, and we have a lot of conversations about that subject. So let me get right into the, the, the nitty gritty of the first thing, which is just a quick definition. For context, this is a general de definition of the, each of these things, and you probably already kind of understand them if you're watching this video. Debt settlement is where an individual or a service working on your behalf are trying to negotiate the debt amounts by decreasing what is owed. So you could think about it as trying to negotiate 10,000 to 5,000. Chapter seven, bankruptcy bankruptcy can wipe away most of your unsecured debt and is maybe the least costly option. And that's a bankruptcy option that is a legal bill option for debt relief. Chapter 13 bankruptcy is a bankruptcy that generally restructures your debt and is labeled as a wage earners plan. It's often due to either uh, you making too much to qualify for chapter seven bankruptcy, or uh, you maybe have assets that aren't covered uh, in, in by the uh, bankruptcy exemptions or something else. Maybe you just wanted to do chapter 13 for another reason. There's a lot of different reasons. Now that we cover the definitions, let's kind of cover how to kind of think about debt settlement versus bankruptcy. Most people think about chapter seven, chapter 13 and debt settlement and debt management, but we will cover debt management in this video because many people may not be able to afford their debts just because of an interest rate reduction. That said, if you are interested in kind of the, the differences between debt management and debt settlement or debt management versus bankruptcy, I'm going to include a link in the description below so you can kind of compare those two as well. Now, let's talk about what people think about when they think about debt relief and debt settlement bankruptcy. So when I, many people I speak with want the least expensive option, the least duration, and one that will be able to keep their belongings. And, and many people think of this is chapter seven and chapter seven bankruptcy is all, often the least expensive option and it can be you can be discharged in your debt uh within in, in as little as four months now the challenge with this option is that you must qualify and you could lose your, your home in a chapter seven bankruptcy if the equity that you own in that asset is more than the exemptions in your state and, and we'll, we'll include a link to the exemptions article that might be helpful if you don't qualify for chapter seven bankruptcy or your assets exceed the bankruptcy exemptions many people consider chapter 13 bankruptcy or debt settlement now those two options are very 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 different and they have some very they also have some similarities so two questions to consider is what is the total monthly payment of each option and then what is the length of time that you'll get debt free knowing both of these variables will help you kind of understand the cost and the duration and then also what are your long-term financial goals you know there's credit impacts for bankruptcy there's credit in impacts for debt settlement so knowing what your goals are can be very helpful okay next we're going to talk about this uh, debt settlement versus bankruptcy calculator and the, and the reason we built this free resource was to help you understand the differences and nuances specific to your information. I included the link to the debt settlement versus bankruptcy calculator in the description below. This calculator is gonna help you kind of understand each of the three options holistically and personalize to your data and your location. So first, it's gonna allow you to compare the monthly cost and one-time cost of debt settlement, chapter seven and chapter 13 bankruptcy based on your city or zip code, et cetera. Next, you can see kind of that everything that goes into the cost. You can see, well, okay, what what, it, what is it that actually goes into the costs that is breaking down into that monthly monthly option. Next, you're gonna get uh, that, that calculator kind of highlights the pros and cons for each of the options so that you can kind of know them. And next, we also provide these specific insights that help you kind of determine all these different variables about debt settlement, bankruptcy, and chapter 13. Okay, next we're gonna cover how debt settlement works. Just a quick overview because you probably have already done some research. Debt
debt settlement works as an intermediary between you and the debt, the creditor. And so the, what the debt settlement company will do will they'll create an enrolled, uh, enrolled owned bank account, an escrow bank account for you uh, that will consolidate all of your payments into one payment for the creditor. So you'll make a monthly draft each month to this bank account, and then they will use those to negotiate and settle and pay out all the creditors. Next, the debt settlement company will communicate with all your creditors and will be the primary point of contact going forward to prevent them from you receiving all these collection calls. Next, as you build those funds in your account, they're gonna negotiate one by one with your creditors for the lowest possible rate. They'll send that agreement over to you and then you can accept or decline that settlement. Um, so you always have control over what option you wanna do. Next, they'll they'll do that for all of the, your different creditors until you're, you are essentially debt free. And this is like one of the most important things to kind of understand is how long is it gonna take? How much is it gonna cost you? So a couple points really quick to note is when you're choosing a debt settlement company, it's important to observe the fees as the fees can range generally between 15% and 25% of your enrolled debt. And that can mean thousands and potentially tens of thousands of dollars of difference. The only ones that we work with now are generally those that are that are that have those lower fees. You should also look at CFPB's information on debt settlement before signing the dotted, dotted line. You always wanna confirm that the debt settlement company that you choose is legitimate. We found a couple firms that we really appreciate that are based on our own legitimacy criteria. And I'll, set, I'll add a link to a video, the video below that kind of shows what to look for and what not to look for in a debt settlement firm. Next, let's cover chapter seven bankruptcy. The main differences between chapter seven and chapter 13 bankruptcy may be the cost and the duration. In chapter seven bankruptcy, uh, it's a uh, often about one third the cost of a chapter 13 bankruptcy and can take a lot less. So a chapter seven bankruptcy can take uh, 120 days before you kind of get the forgiveness of the debt. Well, chapter 13 bankruptcy can take three to five years. Now, chapter seven bankruptcy, you often have to qualify. So in order to qualify, there's a thing called the means test. And, you, and it has to, the idea is that this quiz is basically asking the question, do you have the means to pay back any of your creditors or should you get discharged from your debt quicker? Our debt settlement versus bankruptcy calculator that I uh, is in the description below, actually uses the most recent data from the chapter seven means test and helps you actually estimate whether you qualify after you take the calculator. So you can kind of gauge whether you qualify or not qualify, and that can give you some sense of uh, your options. Now, a couple points to note, the higher your disposable income may mean that the chances of you qualifying for chapter seven bankruptcy is diminished. And the reason why is that the, in a chapter 13 bankruptcy, they may take your disposable income and use that to pay off your creditors. Next, there may be exempt assets that are state specific. What that means is that in a chapter seven bankruptcy, you may qualify, but you may lose assets if you have equity above the exemptions in your state. And I know that's a little complicated. So I apologize for that, this kind of complication, but I will include a link in the description below that can help you understand how bankruptcy exemptions work and show you resources to how you can find the bankruptcy exemptions in your state. Now that we covered chapter seven, let's go ahead and cover chapter 13 bankruptcy. A chapter 13 bankruptcy is another debt relief option that is a legal debt relief option. A chapter 13 bankruptcy can often take three or five years. There are also limits as, as how much debt you can include. A chapter 13 bankruptcy is often more expensive and it takes longer. And when you file a chapter 13 bankruptcy, it can be somewhat similar to a debt settlement in that it's a payment plan bankruptcy um, and where you usually pay some or all of your debts back to the creditors in a payment structure. The, the difference tends to be that you have a lot of the legal protection from your creditors in a chapter 13 bankruptcy. And there's a, maybe a few, a, a, a quite a few other things that to consider and benefits of chapter 13 bankruptcy that we can cover a, a little bit later. One of the benefits of a chapter 13 bankruptcy is that you can you may be able to keep all your assets and they are protected. Now there's a few points to note. One is that a chapter 13 bankruptcy can last three or five years. Two is if you fail to make payments in your bankruptcy to the trustee, the case may be, mis, may be dismissed, leaving you to owe your creditors again. And the fees for the legal services that you've already received may not be refunded. And third, the chapter 13 payment plan and may be inflexible, meaning that if you have unexpected emergencies, you may lose, if someone loses a job or you have something, the case may be dismissed. So you may not get that flexibility that you get as if you were in a debt settlement plan. Next, we're gonna cover the debt settlement versus bankruptcy pros and cons. Hopefully these pros and cons will help you kind of determine whether this, uh, which option is best for your situation. So 
first. With credit score, let's talk about the damage to the credit report. First, I would say debt settlement, chapter seven, debt settlement has kind of a medium credit score impact because you're gonna see that no bankruptcy, um, that because it's not on your public record. In chapter seven, you're gonna have a bankruptcy on your public record that's uh, gonna be there for 10 years. Chapter 13 bankruptcy, you'll have it on your public record for seven years. So we would say that debt settlement probably has the better of those options. For damage to credit score, I would say debt settlement, you know, can have a medium to high impact. Uh, chapter seven and chapter 13 bankruptcy can both have a medium to high impact as well. Um, it really depends on your starting point on your credit score. And, and that's really important to kind of understand when you go through it, um, that each of them could have a medium to high impact. In some cases, uh, our, one of our chapter seven uh, bankruptcy attorneys that we work with said that the credit, your credit score could actually increase in a chapter seven bankruptcy because it's basically getting rid of a lot of the things that were on there. So that's kind of a medium to high impact on potentially all three options. In terms of payment flexibility, I would say the debt settlement probably has one of the higher payment flexibilities due to the fact that if you you could potentially miss a payment for December, as long as you're not in a debt settlement and, and nothing would happen. Um, there's probably less payment flexibility in chapter seven, but that's generally because you are paying an upfront fee and getting discharged pretty quickly. And also in chapter 13 bankruptcy, if you miss payments, you could be facing a dismissal of your chapter 13 bankruptcy. In terms of time, I would say chapter seven bankruptcy is probably the best here. You can get a chapter Chapter seven bankruptcy discharge in as little as 120 days. Next debt settlement, it might take about two to four years. And a chapter 13 bankruptcy is generally three or five years, unless you're in a hundred percent payment plan, which could be a little bit less. In terms of legal protection, both chapter 13 and chapter seven bankruptcy, you do have legal protection from your creditors. Now I would say the, uh, the debt settlement legal protection is not there, uh, but if you find the right debt settlement firm, they can generally know the lawsuit likelihood of your creditors and protect you from those types of things if they prioritize your creditors mix well. In terms of qualification, um, in Chapter 13 bankruptcy, most people qualify as long as they're under the debt limits and the debt limits are very high. In Chapter 7 bankruptcy, uh, there is qualification that you have to mo most often do. And in debt settlement, you can there has to be qualification as well because sometimes creditors may not, uh, may, some debt settlement companies might not work with some creditors. On the public record, I would say debt settlement wins here because on a Chapter 7 and a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, you have something on your credit re uh, report record for uh, seven or 10 years and debt settlement, you don't have that. So that is a benefit to debt settlement. In terms of taxes on unpaid debt, I would say that chapter seven and chapter 13 could win here because you don't necessarily have to pay on any taxes on unpaid debt. In bank debt settlement, you may have to pay taxes if you are tax solvent. I can add a link below and you can kind of estimate whether you're tax solvent, but um, I'm not gonna get into too many of those details here, but I'll put a link below that can be helpful for you. In terms of property protection, um, debt settlement and chapter 13 probably wins here. In chapter 13 bankruptcy, you have automatic you know, protection from the creditors for your property. In debt settlement, you nece don't necessarily have that protection, but they're, you're basically uh, only paying or only settling debt that's unsecured, that's not backed by any property. Um, and as long as they settle the debts and gets you out of debt that way, then there is this sort of like help in that way. In chapter seven bankruptcy, you would potentially have property protection up to the exemptions in your state. And if you have equity above those exemptions, you may not have that property protection that you would have in uh, chapter 13 bankruptcy. So now we cover the debt settlement versus bankruptcy pros and cons. What should you do? This is probably the most important question. And we can't necessarily answer that for you because everything about your financial situation is completely unique. What I would recommend would be to take the debt settlement versus bankruptcy calculator to help you kind of be informed about your different options. It's a completely free resource that we built just specifically for you and for helping you kind of understand those options. And leave us a comment. We'd love to answer any questions that you have about different options. We'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Also, if you like this video, we would definitely appreciate a like. And if you want other information related to debt settlement, bankruptcy, how to get a debt cheaper, easier, and faster, please subscribe because we have videos pretty often about these different options and we really want you to make the most informed decision. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.